everybody, thanks for stopping by part three of the Micron Plus build from FormBot. Today we're going to be going over the gantry build and installation, as well as the Z building. We'll kick things off with some prep work for the gantry build, heat set inserts for the front idlers, the XY joints, and the X carriage. And then loaded up the M2 nut carriers for both of the Y extrusions. Grease both of the Y linear rails. Per the assembly instructions, the Y rail needs to be centered on the extrusion. So I measured, centered, and then secured in place, ensuring to tighten from the center outwards. With both Y rails complete, we can move on to the X. The X rail uses 11 M3 hex nuts rather than the M2 nuts with carriers. Like the Y rails, the X needs to be centered on the extrusion. It is also recommended to use the printed alignment tools. Depending on the printed M3 nut carriers, you can either use M3x6 or M3x8. As I'm using the R1 parts, it comes with beefy front idler stock. You will have to assemble a standard bearing stack onto the M3x12. Be sure to mind the orientation of the front caps on the idlers, as one will be left and one will be right. The teeth on the GT2 go to the top when assembling the A motor mount. The connector on the motor will face inwards, so to the left in this case. The Y end stop simply slots in. The A motor mount receives a total of three bearing stacks, one on the left and two on the right. When tightening down the screws that hold the bearing stacks in place, I like to tighten them enough that there's no vertical play in the bearings, but loose enough that they can still spin freely. You will then line up the teeth on the GT2 with the top bearing stacks, securing the grub screws in place with Loctite. The B motor mount has the GT2 teeth at the bottom. It also receives three bearing stacks, two on the left and one on the right this time. The form bot XY joints vary from the manual using a GT2 toothed idler at the front and a bearing stack at the rear for each XY joint. To ensure clean input shaping results, it is also imperative that you follow the same steps on these as you do the AB motor mounts, ensuring as little vertical play as possible while still allowing the bearing or idler to spin freely. Two top and two bottom M3 nuts are then inserted to each end of the Y extrusions. The extrusions can then be inserted into the respective front idlers and motor mounts and secured with the belt clamps and M3 by 12 button heads. Make sure the extrusion is flush with the backside of the mount and or idler when installing them. To attach the XY joints to the X extrusion, you need two top M3 nuts and one bottom M3 nut per side.
Heat set inserts were then required for the Clicky Probe dock, the umbilical mount, as well as the Z chain guide block. The rear of the gantry's X beam then receives four M3 nuts to the rear, four M3 nuts to the top, and four M3 nuts to the bottom. To save yourself some hassle when deracking the gantry later on, leave the next eight M3x8s loose enough to move the extrusion around within the A and B motor mounts. The X assembly can then be installed onto the linear rails, the Y axis. I then finished assembling the Clicky Probe dock with the magnet and M3x20 socket heads. The umbilical mount, the Z chain block, and the Clicky Probe dock were then installed to the rear of the gantry. To reduce your chances of having belt-related racking, it is important to cut both belts the exact same length, tooth for tooth. I made the mistake of printing off the MGN7 X carriage, so the V2.4 came to the rescue. While waiting for the new X carriage to print, I decided to route the belts for the A and B motors. Be sure to take your time while doing so to route them properly and to make sure that they are all seated on the idlers or bearings correctly. When installing the X carriage, make sure you have the same amount of belt sticking out each side tooth for tooth. If both belts were cut the same length and you have the same length sticking out each side, you will have even tension going into the belt tensioning process. You can then secure the X carriage with four M3 by eight button heads. The 5 volt pads will have to be soldered on the TAP PCB as the EBB36 only has a 5 volt probe port. The clicky hardware was contained within the kit that had the PCBs as well, so everything you'll need to assemble it will be found in there. The X end stop needs to be pointed upwards on the X carriage in order to trigger correctly against the XY joint. With the clicky mount installed at the bottom of the X carriage, we can move on to mounting the Z belts to the bottom of the gantry. I like to tape them with masking tape to keep them from flopping around, getting tangled or getting in the way when installing the gantry into the actual frame. The gantry goes in at an angle and then gets zip tied to the top extrusions. We can then secure the Z joints to the gantry following the diagram on the right. All four of the Z belts can then get routed down through the Z drives, back through the gantry or idler, through the top idlers and back down to the top of the gantry.
The zip ties holding the gantry in place can then be removed. The belts will hold them in place. Now I'm not going to run through the detailed process of deracking the gantry. There are tons of other tutorials online for this, but I did so quickly before finishing up the video. As always, thank you for stopping by and checking out the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed it, and feel free to use one of my affiliate links in one of your future purchases. Thanks again.